Let's take a look at some of those earnings reports that were out, starting off with Equity Bank. The numbers there coming in after the closing bell. What did you make of those numbers? Um, from the, the results of Equity um, and NIC Bank, actually, uh, we're able to tell that now the true effect of how the economy is actually, is actually coming out, because you, act, you can actually see that Equity reported um, a, net, uh, a pre tax loss of um, 15% in, um, in the aspect of um, profits. Its increased operations actually were up 23%. So basically, these are the few indicators we're looking at to be able to understand how companies, especially in the finance sector, have been doing. Because for the last one and a half years, they've been the best performing companies. When, when all the sectors are put together. When you look at um, NEC, there was actually a growth in its pre-tax uh, pre profits by 23.4%. So it's, it's actually hard to tell how the strategies in various banks, because you see like equity has taken the, the approach of actually targeting the mass market. Uh, NEC capital has taken the, the path of looking at um, um, corporate and uh, you know the equity market. So dif the, the different strategies applied by these banks actually can actually reflect how the result, results are going to be. Yeah. We're still looking forward to, to more, and then we'll be back to tell how things will be. But um, from the way the various macro fundamental uh, factors of this country are, I don't think we'll be having good results anytime soon. Just looking at equities numbers, I mean, they've attributed uh, the losses to uh, a once-off income of an estimated 1.1 billion Kenyan shillings from the Safaricom IPO, which it earned last year. It's also said that operating ex uh, expenses have increased 32%, uh, and that partly due to the aggressive expansion plans they've embarked on. But the concern really comes from the fact that equity doubled their reserves, provisioning for bad debt at this stage of the game and that really eating to into profits just how concerned is the market with that level of provisioning uh, one uh, we can actually see that um, finally at least it's the one bank that actually admitted the Safaricom was actually the Safaricom IPO was not such a beautiful you know dessert on the table as many people thought it would be because now everyone seems to be actually turning to Safaricom and saying we're incurring these losses we're having this um, increase in expenses because of Safaricom or how we went about it but um the provision given by equity is actually worrying because um if I believe it's not the only bank that actually had such a particular trend and uh, now we'll be looking at the other IPO transactions that actually took place and we will be asking ourselves uh, are most banks going actually to like um, have a thing with IPO transactions saying that this is happened because of uh, what happened in the stock market but I believe um, in as much as banks have actually you know, like taken with the taken into the equities market uh, strongly it's time uh, the banking industry actually separated itself from uh, the equity and the cap, uh, the stock market because with this, we'll be able to know in terms of um, bookkeeping and the uh, financial records how things are. And for us, investors can actually help us to know uh, which way to go in terms of investing at the market. Steve, just looking at the numbers here, I mean, the ratio of net uh, non-performing loans to net loans and advances worsened to 5.3% uh, from 3.2% uh, in June 2008. I mean, given this and given the level of provisioning that's been made, what does this say about the bank's risk mitigating uh, or management strategy, especially in the current climate and especially given the fact that it's major uh, target it is the mass market uh, one uh, I believe um, especially with equities um, strategy of actually going for the mass market I think they need to look at it in the current economic situation because even as we speak right now most SMEs businesses in this country are actually really suffering a lot because of um, water shortage um, electricity rationing and the like so most of these uh, people who had actually borrowed loans from, um, from, say, Equity or Kenya Commercial Bank or NIC will actually, I'm thinking, will be going back to the management and saying, let's renegotiate our loan and give us more time to repay this. And then um, the other thing that actually been in the headlines is um, the, the aspect of the, the lending rates. When you look at it, the, the, the deal between banks and central bank and then between commercial banks and clients in terms of um, lending rates. There's a big disparity in terms of um, how much uh, we as clients actually pay. So when you see the one, there's the aspect of uh, what's happening in terms of uh, economic fundamentals, and then there's the basic uh, management in terms of how loans are repaid. So I think banks are actually going to sit down and um, relook at how they're going to lend the loans. And um, two weeks ago, actually, Central Bank did ask the banks to actually relax on the terms and conditions when they're actually giving out money. Yeah. So I think there'll be more provisions on bad debts, on non-performing 
um, aspects in the books for the, say the next two quarters. Well, the CBK is certainly hoping that uh, you know its new policies will lead to faster rates of expansion. It's already lowered its own lending uh, rate and the cash reserve ratio for banks to five, uh, four point five percent from five percent in order to inject more liquidity into the economy. Many saying.